leave room and build in space for mistakes. No one else is going to tell you this step or tip. I'm gonna share five easy steps that help me lose 50 pounds fast and keep it off because I used to be morbidly obese. I weighed 275 pounds and I tried for years to lose the weight, but I kept failing and I couldn't figure out why. And then I realized it was because I was making weight loss so hard for myself. Once I realized that, I started following these steps and because I was able to stick to it and actually enjoy what I was doing, I was able to lose my first 50 pounds in three months. So the first step is... Make one small change and be consistent with it. I know this is going against everything you've ever heard, but what I learned is small changes can lead to big results. And this is why, like what I did was when I would decide to lose weight, I would change my entire life around just so that I could lose weight. But that obviously failed because it's not sustainable because I literally changed everything. The way I was eating, the way I was living my whole life. I gave things up that I liked just to lose weight and it didn't work. And all it did was backfire and trigger my emotional eating. And then I would go in this never ending dieting, emotional eating, failing cycle over and over. The one small change that I decided to do was Kyle and I, my husband, he's lost the same amount of weight as me. We both lost 50 pounds in three months once we started following these steps. And the biggest thing that we were doing every day was we were having a family size bag of chips every night for a snack. And we were like, okay, we can't give up the chips. We don't want to. Anytime we've tried that, it has failed. Um, so what can we do instead? And we decided we weren't ready for a serving size of chips, which is only like 36 chips, but we thought we could do a decent size bowl of chips. And this is the exact bowl that we use. We've literally had these for years and we would fill the bowl. And when it was done, that was it. That was our serving. And what we did was we decided to make this a non-negotiable. So we picked this one small change and we decided to tackle the small changes one thing at a time. This became the non-negotiable. You can have your chips, but you can have a bowl, not the bag. By doing that, we were able to be consistent because we were, we were getting the chips, but we were automatically eating less and being in a calorie deficit because we were no longer eating the bag, we were eating a little bit less than we were used to. And that allowed us to keep that non-negotiable and to be consistent with it. Then when we were ready, we were doing that consistently every day. Then we were like, okay, after a little bit of time, we said, okay, now we can have another small change to add to that and then make that a non-negotiable too. And then gradually you build on them. And that's why small changes can lead to big results. Because if you get consistent with one and build on it, then you can have a bunch of small changes that will help you get the results over time. Number two, I stopped focusing on what I was eating and started focusing on how much. So I thought in order to lose weight, I had to only eat healthy foods. So what I would do is I would take away everything that I thought was causing me to gain the weight and only eat clean, healthy, organic, grass-fed food. I took away treats, I took away carbs, every food that I loved, I took it away and I expected myself to be this completely perfect eater overnight. Now, why did this fail? Again, because I went from eating, I was expecting myself to go from someone who was eating an entire family sized bag of chips every night, seven full cans of regular Dr. Pepper every single day, and a ton of other food. I expected myself to go from that to only eating nuts, avocado, salad, perfect healthy diet like that. There's no way that's not feasible to expect myself to totally alter my entire diet, never touch a chip or a piece of pizza again and go on like that for the rest of my life. That's just not who I was and where I came from, that was expecting way too much. 
The other piece of that is what I didn't realize at the time, there's only one rule when it comes to losing weight. And that is you need to be in a calorie deficit, meaning you need to eat less. I could eat all the healthiest foods in the world if I was eating nuts, avocado, clean organic food in a calorie surplus, I would gain weight. If I was eating the nuts and the avocado and the clean food in a calorie deficit, I would lose weight. Same with cheeseburgers or pizza. If I eat them in a calorie surplus, I'm gonna gain weight. But if I eat them in a calorie deficit, I will lose weight. So I realized it doesn't matter what I eat, it's how much. And because I wasn't ready to give up my food or alter my diet right away, I decided to focus on eating a little bit less and getting in a calorie deficit and focusing on getting used to eating a little less. I had emotional eating. I had a hard time even eating one bite less. So for me, I decided, and Kyle too, to lose weight using portion control because that allowed us to keep eating the foods that we enjoyed that we were already eating but portioning them out using the serving sizes on the backs of packages as a guide helped us get in a calorie deficit because we were eating a little bit less than we usually were. And because of that, we were able to stick to it. Once we got consistent with eating in a calorie deficit, eating less, then, and getting the weight off because we were both morbidly obese, our life was at risk every day we stayed at that, the weights we were. Um, once we got consistent with that, and we were losing the weight, then we were like, okay, we're being consistent now. Now we can start adding a balance of food groups for the health part of it. Now we can add in more fruit, more veg, but we needed to get consistent with being okay with eating less first. Number three, I started to choose my foods wisely so that I could stay fuller longer. So, like I said, I was morbidly obese. I was used to eating thousands of calories a day. I also have a really big appetite, but I gain weight very easily. So I needed to find a way to a way to pick the food um, to pick the food wisely, so that I could feel full but stay in a calorie deficit. Um, I needed. It's normal to be hungry when you're in a calorie deficit because you're eating less than you're used to, and I was eating like a lot less, even a little less. That was huge for me. So picking a balance of mostly low calorie, high volume foods, which are foods like veggies, fruit, lean protein, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, those kinds of things that are low calorie, but you can eat a lot of them and feel full because you can't, like I'm not gonna eat a bag of strawberries. Like it's easy to eat in a calorie deficit and feel full on low cal, high volume things mixed with a little bit of calorie dense things like whole eggs, cheese, some, some milk or some protein milk, um, some peanut butter, mixed those in with the low cal high volume and that really helped me feel fuller and more satiated longer. That way I felt like I was getting a lot of food but I was still staying in a calorie deficit to keep losing the weight while eating things that I enjoyed because I was portioning it all out. And if you wanna know the exact portions and meals that I ate to lose the weight, you can buy my weight loss ebook called The First 50. The link is down below and code Nicole will save you 10%. And speaking of feeling fuller longer, protein. I made sure that I really bulked up and ate a lot of protein with every meal because protein lowers your hunger hormone called ghrelin and it helps you feel fuller longer. And if you're looking for a really good protein, I have Huddle, this is HTLT Seps. This is their seasonal flavor, the hot chocolate. Literally looks, I mean literally smells and tastes like hot chocolate and it really helps with my chocolate cravings. Put a scoop of this in plain fat-free Greek yogurt. You got yourself a chocolatey protein bonanza delight, let me tell you. Code Nicole will save you 15% off and the link is down below. Number four, leave room and build in space for mistakes. No one else is going to tell you this step or tip. What I wanted to do was as soon as I made the decision to lose weight, I expected myself to be perfect right out the gate. Okay, 
Even though I set myself up for success with the portion control, with eating foods that I like, with making one small change and being consistent, I still expected that to be perfect because I was like, okay, now I have a great plan. Everything's gotta go perfect. But this is the thing. Even if you have something that's really gonna work for you and is working for you, you still have to expect that you're gonna make mistakes. Weight loss is not linear. Plateaus, mistakes, slip ups, they're all normal and they're all part of the journey. So what I learned is when I finally, and these steps, by the way, they didn't just help me lose my first 50 pounds in three months. They helped me go on to lose, and Kyle too, we've lost a total of 130 pounds each and kept it off for nine years. And one of our biggest things was realizing we're gonna make mistakes. When you go into a weight loss journey expecting that mistakes are gonna happen, when they do, you're a lot more prepared for them, you're a lot more gentle on yourself, and it's so much easier to handle them and get back on track quicker because you've expected them to happen, you know they're normal, so you can then look at, okay, is there something off in my diet? Is it not balanced? Why did I go off track? And then you can easily go, okay, that's normal, and get right back on track. So leave room for mistakes, they will happen, there's nothing wrong with you, they're totally normal and a part of the weight loss journey. Also, along with mistakes, expect that you will end up overeating again. What we did was like, when we first started losing weight and getting the results and everything, we thought we were never gonna overeat again. We thought that we were gonna have like, be the perfect dieters now because we were losing weight, we were getting results, we were liking what we were doing. And we're like, yeah, we're gonna be portion control friends forever. We're never gonna go, you know, eat above our portions. That is not sustainable. Part of normal life is sometimes you're gonna wanna eat a little more. And that is normal. What we do now though, before the food controlled us, now we choose and plan when we wanna eat a little bit more. And we build that in because this is a, I call it dieting just because it's easier for people to understand, but it's really a weight loss, it's really um, a lifestyle change. It's not a diet. It's a part of your journey and your life. You have holidays, you have birthdays. So Kyle and I let ourselves have a diet break. We learned it's not mentally or physically healthy for us to be in a calorie deficit all year long. So there are days where we let ourselves have treats like pizza and ice cream or a cheat day or more calories but we make sure that it's planned and we have built it in. It's not choosing us. One more thing before I go to number five. Uh, we've got a lot of comments. The Super Bowl was this past weekend that we're filming this video and we've been getting a ton of comments like, oh, I, I was bad at the Super Bowl. I, I ate too many, you know, pizza, chicken wings, cupcakes, like, um, how do I not do that? How do I avoid that? Uh, how do I be good? You know, you that pressure is going to cause rebellion. It's going to backfire. By expecting yourself to not enjoy a Super Bowl party or a birthday or whatever, dinner out with your family or celebrating something, to expect yourself to be like a good eater and not indulge in what is being served, that is not sustainable. If you know you're going to a party, plan for that. Eat your normal day up until the party. Go enjoy yourself. Don't feel bad about it or punish yourself after. What Kyle and I found is the underlying guilt under eating food that people label as unhealthy or bad, that's what really makes all heck break loose and triggers like overeating or triggered our emotional eating. So the key is to admit and acknowledge that you like food and you enjoy treats and celebrating stuff. Let yourself do it and don't feel guilty about it. Just go right back to your plan the next day. Don't over exercise. Don't try to eat less because of it. Just eat your normal day, enjoy yourself, and go right back to the normally scheduled program the next day. Now for number five, choose exercise that you're capable of and physically fit enough to do. 
So I was 275 pounds. My weight was causing me serious health problems. I had sleep apnea so bad. I was stopping breathing seven times a night and partially stopping breathing 84 times a night. I needed a CPAP machine to help me breathe at night. And the weight was also causing back, hip, knee problems, all kinds of joint problems. I had plantar fasciitis so bad in my left foot I could barely walk because of my weight. And I was trying to do exercise like HIT, like Insanity, P90X. I was trying to jog. All these things, when I would do them, one, I wasn't physically fit enough, so I would be so exhausted after trying to do it that I would be defeated and never want to do it again. And if it didn't do that, I would end up injured because I wasn't physically fit enough to do it. And then I would never want to do it again. Once I realized like I can barely walk, what is something that I can do that I can at least physically be capable of a little bit and work on being consistent with? And that was walking, slow walking. Kyle and I both could barely walk. It, he was getting leg cramps all the time. We decided let's commit, and this was another non-negotiable, 15 minutes every day, rain or shine, we get out there, we walk slowly for 15 minutes. We stopped every two to five minutes at first because one of us needed a break, but we just kept going. We did the 15 minutes every day, and as we combined it with the portion control and we kept doing the walking, we were starting to get results and lose weight. And by the end of the three months after we lost our first 50 pounds, we could go the full 15 minutes without stopping. And then gradually over time, because we were consistent with that, we've been able to build onto the cardio. And now, nine years later, we can do an hour of slow walking six days a week. And well, we love I'll, it. I'll add in, this is kind of like the same problem with when you're trying to start to build muscle. So when me and Nicole started out dieting, we were obviously very bad at dieting because yeah. we were both morbidly obese. So we yeah. had to master one thing at a time. Yes. When you see on social media, the same thing with building muscle, it's popular, you get a lot of attention for lifting heavy. Yeah. 99% of people have no idea what they're doing when they're lifting. And it's very dangerous, they're gonna get hurt. But the praise in the comments, you'll see, oh, it's great, you lifted this much today, awesome. Nobody's concerned with if they're doing it right or not. Mm -hmm. So what worked for us in real life, it's the same in the weight room, same as diet, exercise, master one small thing at a time and build from there. Yeah. And that's how I'm going to end this video. Like I always do, weight loss should never be a punishment. Kyle and I failed for years and struggled so long because we tried to do everything at once. We tried to take everything that we learned from the weight loss and fitness industry, from media, from everywhere, and apply it to ourselves all in one day overnight. That is setting way too high expectations when we needed to put one foot in front of the other. We needed to be able to eat one bite less, make one small change. So pick one thing that you can do right now. One more bottle of water, one less bite of food, one tiny little change. It doesn't have to be anything. You can eat one less bite of toast. Me and Nicole you know? are checking our ego every single day in the weight room we just the other day we're like you know we're 40 right we're pushing the weights too much we're gonna yeah. get hurt and our form is going out the window yeah so we yeah i literally i chose a lighter weight we just did legs i chose a lighter weight because i wanted to be able to do the proper form i was doing too heavy before and i was just actually tweaking my back like hurting my back so basically so, we always got to stay on top of the bowl the tablespoon because our ego can get out of control. Oh, I'm fine now, I lost the weight. I can just scoop and eyeball the peanut butter. No, you can't. No, uh, every day we have, I call it, um, we have to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. We literally, I have to tell myself every night when I scoop peanut butter for cottage cheese, level it out, Nicole. And you know, that's just something you get used to doing. You always have to be on it. We, I gotta set my alarm to get up for cardio. I gotta put on my workout clothes and do my workout. I gotta eat less. I gotta level off my spoons. For me personally, I never have to level off my celery, my cucumbers, yeah. my <laughs> strawberries, uh, protein powder. I have to level off my peanut butter. So you'll know specifically for yourself which things you gotta always be on and other things give a little leeway. Me and Nicole can give 
ourselves a little leeway with fruit, for instance, because yes. we don't overdo it with that. That's a very good point. Sometimes I'll scoop a heaper of Greek yogurt too, because I know I'm not going to overeat on that. I always overdo peanut butter. <laughs> yes, me too. So it's about knowing yourself. What is one thing that you're capable of right now that you can change? One small thing. Focus just on that. Get rid of anything else that you've been doing. Any other changes, look at that one small thing. Work on doing that consistently. I'm gonna drink five sips of water every day. And if Do nobody it. else gives you attention in your family or online for that, comment here, we will. Tell us. Because we know how big that is to, to eat one less uh, cookie. Yeah, did you, yeah, did you eat one, one less bite of donut? Did you, you know, Oh, I poured just a tiny bit less of cereal today. Or did you wait for your birthday to eat a donut instead? And you planned it yeah. and you let, and you chose the food instead of letting the, making the food control you. You got to control it. Let us know down below in the comments, what one small change are you gonna make? Because you might help inspire other people who are struggling and show everyone the one small change you're gonna make. And we we might not be able to answer all the comments, but we read them all. And we're always thinking of you guys and sending you love. We're always with you. You're never alone. It's normal to make mistakes. We always have to be on top of it. So, you know, we're struggling right along with you. We always gotta be on it, but, we're real friends losing weight in the real world. So we do it in a way that it's not a punishment and we love it. So make sure you watch this vid and this vid for more fun, sustainable weight loss tips because real people doing it in the real world did it, kept it off for nine years because we did one small step at a time, enjoyed it, picked food that we liked and don't take any food off limits and don't go within rules. We make rules for what works for us, not anyone else out there in la la land. <laughs> so, I love you. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support. We love you. I will catch you in the next big cooter room. Piece it, piece it, piece it. Put the bowl on my head, cause I'm a bowl girl, bowl head, bowl girl. Is that how you get your hair cut? <laughs> well, that would be fun. I gotta try that. Yeah, it look good. <laughs> I can do it for you if you want. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Just cut right along the outside of the bowl. Oh my gosh. Imagine that. Your ponytail be gone. Okay, you guys will know. Like if I fall asleep with this bowl in my head in the next video, you see me, my hair looks kind of funny. Sassy did it. Yeah, you said it. Okay. Whoa. Look, look at, at the biceps. Yeah, it's wearing these bowls, you know? <laughs> <Your muscle. laughs> Don't give uh, TikTok any ideas though. There'll, there'll be a bowl ab workout where you hold it on your head and <laughs> I didn't do this. Yeah, and then people will actually believe it and then oh we'll have gosh. to make a video saying it's not how you do it. Okay, this this is not a bowl TikTok app. Okay? <laughs> this is a, but I am driving my car now. Driving to get myself some donuts. Mm. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.